So yesterday I was bored at school thinking of what to do, like what projects to start uh, with my computers. And then I remembered, oh yeah, my dad has that old ass, like 2001 era Sony Vio in the back. So I went, grabbed it, and I was thinking of upgrading it because I have a lot of parts that are compatible with it. This is the old 40 gigabyte bootleg Seagate hard drive it came with, and this is uh, some Western Digital 120 gig I have. Way nicer. And if that doesn't work, I have an 80 gig. That's over there. They're both IDE, of course. And this, this system shipped with, you can't read it, but 64 megabytes of RAM, way less than anything nowadays. But my dad upgraded it to six, um, 256 megabytes, like, when he got the computer. So, I mean, he already started it off for me. But I have a big old bag of RAM right there. And I know I have something that's compatible for it. Because I have a lot of DDR100 RAM sticks or whatever this takes. DDR100, right? Uh, PC1... 33. Okay, so it's basically DDR1. One of the two. I know there's like two versions. So, I don't know what CPU it has, but looking up these things, I don't know the exact model name either, but it has a very early Pentium 4, it looks like. But usually those ones have like a gig of RAM or something, so they're usually way nicer. So maybe... This is just the same, like, kind of style case, but an earlier computer, I don't know for sure. So I'll be checking that out, but if it has, like, a Pentium 3, then, oh, God. Because it has a Windows ME um, sticker on the back, Millennium Edition. So, yeah, it's nothing recent at all. So I'm going to look through my bag, see what I have there blow this thing out because it is quite dusty not too dusty but quite dusty and i'll see what i can do with this so i was just looking through my ram bag i found a good amount of 256 megabyte sticks a lot of one that didn't a lot of ones that didn't even show the capacity but this isn't the one i'm looking at i thought this one would be good especially since it looks rather nice but i found a basically exact copy of the stick my dad upgraded it with 256 megabytes 13 uh i mean 133 megahertz i gotta get used to saying that and C okay it's cl2 i mean it's cl3 not cl2 but still you know the original stick was cl3 so i think it's pretty good it looks nice there's they're both micron um so looks like got my ram I, I really wish this was the version of the motherboard that supported three sticks of RAM. Okay. So, going to just take the computer itself back there. Because when you look closer, the power supply looks like it has a lot of gunk inside of it. That's a bad angle, but right there. Down here, the ports are filthy. So, I'm going to give myself time to do that. <laughs>
as you saw, I had a great time cleaning this out. Looks like I gotta take out the actual cooler and clean it some more. But I found out about this computer is that it's the RX 450. Um, <laughs> I thought that was a graphics card. No, only the RX 550 is a thing. Shout out to the 470 right there. But <laughs> turns out this is an Athlon uh, computer, AMD stuff, socket A, and it has a 256 um, megahertz bus CPU, the one gigahertz one, so not too slow, not too fast. So what I'm gonna guess is that the fastest one it supports is the 1400 megahertz one, the 1.4 gigahertz one, because that's the fastest one in this whole series for this socket. And so those are pretty cheap right now. So I might get that for this little thing, new, uh, new fan, because this one is terrible. I can imagine that thing's loud as hell. But what I noticed about this power supply is that it has a very weak, um, sorry, 12 volt rail, but it's five volts, like super strong, like 18 amps, while the 12 is only four. So that's pretty strange, but I bet a lot of power supplies of this age were like that. So I'm gonna go take the cooler off and put new thermal paste on and see how that goes. So I found some Asus fan from some M2 motherboard, uh, some like one of those basic M2 coolers, and it was the exact dimensions of the heatsink on this socket uh, Force uh, 62 board. So I just took some tape, wrapped it around the heatsink and the cooler, fit fine. So. I have a feeling that that's going to be working great. Already plugged it all in. Got the 512 megabytes of RAM. And all I have to do now is put the power supply back in and see if this thing boots. Okay, it might be harder to see. <laughs> but I got it on top of my computer here. And it's all plugged in. VGA and power. I'll plug in the keyboard here. Because it does have USB ports on the back and the adapter right there for the front. I'll plug that in if it all goes well, but, well, screw it. Oh, wait, shit, the monitor's not on. Let that do its thing. Okay. Oh, shit. It just beeped. Oh, yeah. I did not just fix this. Oh, my God. Yo! Okay, this thing boots quick. Shit, how's this work? I cannot believe this thing works. Oh my god. Damn. That cooler is actually louder than I thought. Okay, I can... I have a PS2 mouse somewhere. A stupid USB 1.0, but... From the looks of it, I can overclock the CPU. I can push it to 1333. I mean, obviously, I'm not going to do that, but... Since you use a new CPU or install your CPU, the system boots up at the CPU bus frequency of 66 megahertz. The bus frequency on this is 256, I thought. Okay, I'll fix that, but holy shit. Okay. So I couldn't for the life of me get two 256 megabyte uh, PC-133 sticks to work. And turns out, I found out why. I don't know if you can see that, but about right there, there's a piece of food or something or dust, or more than that, just stuck in one of the um, slots of RAM, like one of those dim slots. It has something stuck in it, so... I'm going to try to get that out and see if it'll work then. Because the PC was booting, it just said 256 megabytes. So I was like, huh, wonder why. Turns out, found my issue.